Welcome from the deep. I am Mike Finder. And I am Book of Brett. And today we are going to be talking about the 1984 film, The Terminator. That is going to be the, the original Terminator. Terminator. This is my, uh, my, my Schwarzenegger will get better throughout the episode. I Mine's going to get much, much worse. <laughs> that's, uh, was that that's, just an average, <laughs> that's just an average frat dude on a Friday. <laughs> This is this is a movie that I don't know. I think maybe a little bit out of our wheelhouse, generally speaking, because we mostly do horror. Um, you make me generally do horror. Uh, oh, boo hoo! Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. If I could roll my eyes out of my head right now, I would. God, if only. It took way too long to pick a movie that we were going to do. And it was because Brett threw this big, just what it can only be described as a giant hissy fit. We do too many horror movies. Why do we only do horror? It's the only way to get you to do anything that I want you to do is by throwing, yeah, an adult sized temper tantrum. Well, we had another movie picked and he was just like, I do want to do more horror. So we decided. But the last three. We're in horror and we said at That's the true. beginning of the year, we said at the beginning of the year, we we're going to be branching out. And then we did three of them in a row because you just can't f help yourself. Uh. So anyway, we thought we'd branch out a little bit. I think sci-fi is a good bridge from horror movies into other stuff. Because horror. Horror, horror, horror. Uh, because honestly, there's a lot of horror sensibilities, especially in the Terminator. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, well, I think it's because that's where James Cameron came from, right? So he actually thought up Terminator while working, wrapping up his first movie, which was <laughs> Piranha 2, The Spawnings. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Spawn, Spawnlings or something like that. I think it's The Spawning. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where he, got, so he did get his, his start in the like, creature feature type realm um well yeah because it, he he also worked on um titanic yes oh that's what i was yes. gonna say titanic of course <laughs> right but no this is um i i think you're right he was working on piranha 2 and he came up with the idea for the terminator and then he did aliens right after this so he does yeah. come from he does come from like the whole horror world and in within that world as we know there's a lot of horror sensibilities and special effects and so it's not actually yep. that surprising that the terminator is this weird especially the original the the second one not so much but the the original really is like a good bridge from like horror over into sci-fi and especially you throw arnold in there and it's just like fucking perfect yeah it, it really I, is everything, everything i'm thinking of james cameron all i can hear is his name is james, james cameron the bravest pioneer no budget too steep no seat too deep who's that it's him james cameron it so perfectly encapsulates who he is as a person now. I don't know about back in 1984, but James, it's not a real bar. So, all right. Well, do you want to go ahead and give us a synopsis of Terminator 1? Yes. Terminator is a documentary about Boston Robotics and their rise and fall as they take over the human race with their robot skeletons. Now, uh, Terminator is, I mean, I'm sure we all know Terminator by now, but Terminator is, um, uh, the first two are two of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. And they are the story, or at least this one is the story of a soldier from the future who has to go back to when Los Angeles was somehow even filthier than it is today nope. and save Sarah sadly, Connor. That's not from true. <laughs> <laughs> that's sadly not true. <laughs> You said that such <laughs> conviction, like, nope, you're wrong. That is incorrect. I mean, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Either way, he has to go back. Let me, I'll rephrase. I'll rephrase. Okay. okay? Is that right. fair? Yeah, yeah. A future soldier has to go to filthy, dirty, disgusting, vile 1980s Los Angeles to save Sarah Connor from the clutches of a not quite yet cigar addicted Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I think that this is like the perfect role for him 
because he doesn't have to say much. And, and at this point, I'm not sure how fluent he was with English. And, and I know that that was a really big problem whenever he did Conan. And they basically yeah. had to ADR his entire movie in order to make it kind of watchable. So this is like the perfect fucking role for him right out of the gate, like early 80s. So, all right, let's jump over into the podcast drive in here. The Terminator from 1984. It's rated R. It is an hour and 47 minutes. Has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb, which is very fucking high we do not often see because it's almost perfect Ooh, god fucking yeah that was awful so i think yeah. yeah i mean it's pretty fucking perfect i i don't know if we're going to talk much about the sequels today but if we if we take this movie as a standalone film this is a really really strong fucking movie so an 8.1 does feel about right uh the one sentence yeah. synopsis on imdb here says a human soldier is sent from 2029 to 1984 to stop an almost indestructible cyborg killing machine sent from the same year which has been programmed to execute a young woman whose unborn son is the key to humanity's future salvation. God damn, that is a good synopsis of this film. That Finally, is a good synopsis. We do not Finally, see good yeah. IMDb synopsis very often. Um, it's directed by James Cameron, obviously. It's written by James Cameron, James Gail Cameron. Ann Hurd, and William Wisher. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, and Michael Bean. I think that this is damn near the perfect fucking cast Mr. Bean? for this fucking movie. Honestly, Linda Hamilton is amazing in this. Michael Bean does fucking great. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I like, like him anyway. Like we said, this is the perfect role for him, especially before he's really getting a lot of work with, with bigger speaking roles. So it's just like, dude, this movie is just firing on all fucking cylinders right out of the gate. And it really, you know, rewatching this movie really made me kind of realize like, I, I, I am shocked at how well this movie fucking holds up now mm -hmm. now like i said i don't want to talk about any of the sequels today i want to try to look at the terminator as just a standalone movie if we can look at it through the lens of like 1984 that way we kind of put some perspective on where this movie is coming from because there are some things in here that don't hold up quite as much as you'd like to but as a whole i think this is still a really strong film in 2024 so Let's try to do it that way. We will talk about our overall impressions. We will talk about little spoilers here and there. I think everybody's already seen this by now at this point, so there's not a whole lot to yeah, spoil. Yeah, if you haven't seen it by now, it's on you. Yeah, so we're not That's really going to avoid the whole spoiler thing, but then we will give our ratings and talk about our final thoughts toward the end of the review. So do you want to no, give me your initial thoughts on The Terminator from 1984? The Terminator from 1984 is awesome. Uh, I, I generally don't watch this nearly as much as I watch uh, the second one. I feel like it's a pretty big consensus that the second one is more popular um, and is better. I'm going to say it. It's better. But this one is just, I mean, it's right up my alley. It's got action. It's uh, its sci-fi, which I am a much bigger, uh, I, I am a sci-fi fan, not so much in the way that Mike is a horror fan, but much more a sci-fi fan than I am a horror fan. I feel like the horror movies we've done generally have some type of sci-fi aspects to them. But um, this to me is, is one of the best ways that you make a sci-fi movie rooted in contemporary uh, in a contemporary environment without really making it cheesy or going too overboard. Like when we go, when we jump to the future scenes, we get a lot of cheese, a lot of eighties cheese because the things that people thought were going to be futuristic in the eighties, like guns turned out to just be super soaker designs. And so I, I think that it does a really good job of maintaining a sci-fi element while rooting it in today's society or, well, 1984 society. You can see when we cut to the scenes of the future how it does go really, really cheesy. But when we're in present day, there isn't really a lot of room to go cheesy. I mean, it's cheesy by our standards today, but that's because everybody was so coked out in the 80s that they didn't know they were making <laughs> bad decisions. Can we like go one hair. episode without talking about cocaine? <laughs> they were. I'm sorry. It's the 80s. Like I. And, <laughs> 
What do you want from me? It was the 80s. Did you see the hairstyles in this? Hell yeah. There's no way that wasn't done by some coked out hairdresser back in the 80s. <laughs> but again, like the uh, some as uh, some aspects of the movie have aged. Uh, the special effects are pretty clearly special effects. You can tell. But again, when you look at it from the scope of like 1984, it's pretty fucking impressive man yeah it's I'm, really impressive even like the even like the the prosthetics they had for his face it was like a prosthetic mask rather than a stationary head and so you've still got these um uh human like movements to it and so even that is like a step above what i think you would really really expect in the 80s for like that kind of stuff like normally you would get like dummies you get some kind of like um stationary head on a body and i think a lot of this is them putting like a mask over his face and yeah it looks like a mask yeah it looks like rubber or silicone or whatever they were using but it still looks cool even in today e e even looking at it from today yeah i I mean, I definitely agree with that. I think that one of the weakest things in this movie are some of the special effects. But I also, honestly, I think that it's also a lot of the charm that comes from this movie is the special effects. And and like we were saying earlier, I think that like if the Highlander if, lighting, yeah, lighting, well, that I was thinking more like the stop motion of the, the actual Terminator toward the end. Yeah. I love all of that stuff because it really shows like how much they were able to accomplish without fucking right. CGI. I think that if we, well, if we look at this through the lens of 1984, the sure, the special effects don't hold up. I think the eye part is the part for me that, that is not the best. And if, and if you really, and if we really want to look at it, like if we, if we go over and look at some of the, the, the movies from 1984 here, um, it's, it's really kind of impressive what they were able to accomplish. If we, if we start looking at some of these horror movies here, like Razorback and Gremlins and all this other stuff for the budget that they had. And now, now I'm curious, the budget is 6.4 million. Jesus Which today Christ. is the GDP of America. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like really low for how much, but if, if we're, but again, if we're like talking about like grand scope of this movie, um, the future stuff is the only stuff that is really, really expensive. There's a lot of explosions yeah. and stuff in the eighties side of things, like the fucking, like all the pipe bombs and all that stuff toward the end. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that probably ate up a lot of that budget, but like, I, I would imagine that a lot of the, the the money that was spent on special effects are the head and a lot of the futuristic stuff, which in my opinion is my favorite stuff. I think that's what gives this movie all of its charm is the mm -hmm. sci-fi cheesy shit that you were talking about. And then you yep. mix it like, especially when he's like fixing his arm and shit like that. There's a little bit of gore in here. People literally get exploded and, and it's just, dude, it, it is everything that I fucking love about 80s sci-fi is just yeah. jam-packed into this movie. And it is, dude, it's like, if, we, if we're not talking about any of the other sequels, this is one of the best sci-fi movies that has ever been made in my, in my memory. Because the fucking script is good. It's smart. It's high-minded. It's forward-thinking. It's mm -hmm. everything about it is so relevant to the shit that we talk about today. And it's from 1984. That's the craziest and fucking part about it. And it's probably going to fucking happen. That's what's really fucking crazy is him. That's I just imagine him sitting down writing this in 1984. Like, wouldn't it be crazy if dot, 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 and then cut to 2024. And we have Boston robotics. Like you were saying, we have fucking Elon Musk doing self-driving cars, like all of these things that he had no idea was coming. All of yep. it's in this script. Like literally all James of it. Do you think James Cameron wrote this whole script in the Death Note? I mean, it definitely it like if you really start to pick this apart, it definitely feels like like he had a, a like a fucking door to the future or something, dude. Yeah, like it, it's this really is, crazy. It, this is based four years from now. Um yeah, from right now. Or five yeah, years it's from in now. 2029, right? So, <clears throat> and I mean, if you look at the advancements that like Boston Robotics has been making with their robots, you look at this and you're like, I mean. If they started learning, it would take them like a month 
to get to this point. Um, I saw a thing just yesterday. This was like, um, it was somebody had done a bunch of like theoretical tests on what AI would do. And all of them ended up in it destroying humanity. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's yeah. like, I, I, this is a very real thing. Like, Conspiracy theory or not, this is a very real thing. If you give, he even says in the movie, like it was plugged into everything, i.e. the internet. And if you yep. give it just free reign to, to make decisions and to run our lives and all of that stuff, it's pretty clear that that's kind of what would happen. And I love the fact that he says that it made it made the decision of humanity in a millisecond. And that's all it took and to for it to completely try to kill everybody on the planet. It is so dude. It's just so fucking smart. And I that can, is why this movie holds up because it is sci-fi with a brain. It is not I, just it, 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 the, the thing I don't like about most sci-fi is that it's kind of like, isn't space cool? Isn't space <laughs> awesome? Wouldn't it be cool to go into space? But this, well, no, and no, like see, total these recall, aliens have scales. Exactly. These yeah. aliens are made of oh, they, jelly. They have feathers. Ooh, like that's, that's the stuff I, I don't generally care about on sci-fi, but like with something with this, it's not only got stuff to say, but it's also really intelligent with how it's saying it. And not to mention, it just sets up some of the coolest fucking scenes of any sci-fi that I can think of. And it's, dude, it's just fucking incredible how forward thinking this movie is. Do you think like five years ago, James Cameron realized what he'd wrote? He saw the relevance of it today and he's just been building a bunker ever since. Like, no, nah, fuck it, man. I know it's coming. Nope, we're going underground. I mean, I think that he did say something not that long ago. Let me see if I can find this because this is really interesting if I can find it. This is, I quote, I warned you guys in 1984, James Cameron over the concerns of AI. I warned you guys in 1984. <laughs> you didn't listen. Uh, sure, look, I mean, you've got, you got to follow the money. Who's building these things, right? They're either building it to, to dominate market share. So what are you teaching it? Greed. Or you're building it for defensive purposes. So you're teaching it paranoia. Uh, I think the weaponization of AI is the biggest danger. I think that we will get into the equivalent of a nuclear arms race with AI. And if we don't build it, the other guys are for sure going to build it. And uh, so then it'll just, it'll escalate. And, and you know, you could imagine an, an uh, AI in a combat theater, the whole thing just being fought by the computers at a speed that humans can no longer intercede. You have no ability to de-escalate. And when you're dealing with the potential of it escalating to nuclear warfare, de-escalation is the name of the game. And having that pause, that timeout, but will they do that? The AIs will not. See, and that's the sort of fucking thing I'm talking about here. So I just think it's fucking crazy. That's where his mind was at in 1984. And he even says in that clip, like, I warned you back in 1984. Dude, it's just so prolific in thinking that fucking far ahead. And when you look back at it, it's kind of like, duh. Like, right. uh, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, when you think about him thinking about all of this stuff in 1984, it's not duh. It's like literally mind blowing. Well, and not only that, he he, me he mentions something in there that was uh, really interesting, where he says uh, uh, you're 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 teaching it greed or you're teaching it paranoia, and that is because that's what human beings thrive on. That's true. I mean, <laughs> we're teaching we're teaching it the things that benefit us at an individualistic level, and that's what we're going to teach them. And 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 that's what's so funny is what he's right when you when you teach it those things, that's what you get. Terminator is what you get. Yeah. And, and how is it going to come to any other outcome than? I need to destroy all of these people because they're in my way of my ultimate greed and shit. Like, well, I, the, how do I, well, the, the, how do I streamline this process of whatever I'm trying to accomplish as much as possible? These fucking people and their feelings are in the way. We got to fucking, right. we got to get rid of them. Right. Well, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of like how I treat my dog. Honestly, you, are you going to, are you, you going to go deeper into what? that or? No, I wasn't going to. I feel like the hole's big enough. Um, but no, I, I the, 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 the only. <laughs> Sorry. Gee, that was so lazy. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Anyway, no, um, the thing that I take solace in if something like this happens is, you know, backwards time travel not being a possibility. Oh, and so, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's at least there's at least that they can't go back and can't, they can go forward. But backward won't be an option. So at least there's that. But the sad part is I have to take solace in this because I know that as long as the money and quote ambition is there, we'll get here eventually. Well, I think what's what's really interesting about all of this is how Linda Hamilton's character develops in this fucking franchise. It is when you go back and watch Terminator 1 it's really easy to forget when you're watching anything past Terminator one, where she came from as a character and not even, not even in the, in the sequels, like where she starts at the beginning and where she ends in this movie is that the fucking character development and her arc is so yeah. compelling and interesting yep. and well-written that I think that more than anything else, cause you got to have a protagonist that you actually give a fuck about in a movie right. like this. And she is the perfect fucking protagonist to care about in this film. Yeah, because I mean, she does not want to be in the situation that she's in. She does not immediately go into badass mode. Yeah. She doesn't go into badass mode until the last like 20 fucking minutes yeah. of this movie. Uh, up until the last 20 minutes, she is a borderline liability <laughs> in true. this movie. Yeah. And and then at a certain point when it, you can kind of all see it click for her. And I, it, when, you know, when, when we get to the point where she finally is like okay i gotta get my shit together because this dude isn't looking so good and but there i remember watching it and thinking how she just immediately goes to get up soldier and i remember the first or because the first couple times i watched this that part of the movie always struck me as a little bit forced and then i the more i thought about it and the more i put myself into her character's head the more i think that that was more her going this is the only thing that's gonna get reese motivated yeah. to get the fuck up and start moving well, yeah because when you think about his backstory it's it's it would be the, one of the few ways that he would actually like you know come back from that because that's what he's been doing his entire life yeah right Exactly. So, um, so yeah, no, I think you're right. Her, her character development in the, this is how you develop characters. Yes. Like everybody in this movie, every single person in this movie, I give a shit about with, with one degree of intensity or another. Um, uh, it doesn't matter how small or anything like that. I, I care about them. And sometimes it's because they're kind of floating in the gravity of the other characters around them, but them being there, their delivery, like all the actors in this are great down to the psychiatrist. We see for five minutes, like everybody does such, <laughs> such a good fucking job in this movie, but it would be nothing if this movie wasn't so meticulously written the way that it is, because it would be so easy so easy for this to fall off into like babylon 5 territory where it starts not that babylon 5 is bad or anything i like babylon 5 but babylon 5 does have like an overt cheesiness to it especially like the original run of the series and it would be so easy to fall off into that cheesy cliche territory of sci-fi and this never does that. Every step this movie takes in sci-fi territory is new ground. Well, that's, I think, a testament to the to the fucking script, because like every character reacts in a way that you would imagine when somebody shows up and goes, hey, I'm I'm from the future and I'm here to save you. Like her initial reaction is like, yeah, uh huh, sure. Like, right. And and like you said, the therapist, the police 
all of them react in a very organic, real way that you would react if somebody was talking all of this shit. Like, I'm from the future and there's Terminators and they killed everyone. And it's like, I, I love when he st- when the therapist stops the tape and is like, I could make a whole fucking career off of this guy because he's clearly yeah. fucking insane. Those are right. all very genuine, real reactions. And they feel as if they're coming from actual real people, which is which is what really gives this entire movie the gravity that it has because if they were all reacting in a way that like a cheesy 80s sci-fi slash horror movie sort of a way none of it would feel nearly as impactful and interesting and real as it does and because those characters and like you said every single one of them by the way all feel like real genuine people the whole fucking thing stands up this many years later and and it's all helped by the insanely good fucking acting that every Mm -hmm. single person in this movie has all of yep. them have the chops, even Arnold walking around, not really saying much. And there are points where, where it's, you know, you can see if you're familiar with Arnold's clothes. other work, you can <laughs> see him. Clothes. You can, God damn it. Why can't I do it? <laughs> because it's surprisingly difficult. But if you're familiar with Arnold's other work, you can see how early on he was in this movie and how kind of inexperienced he was like actually delivering lines and all of that stuff. But it doesn't hold the movie back because he is playing a fucking robot. So it works. Right. It's just the perfect right. casting all around, especially Linda Hamilton. Like, do, God do, damn. Do you, do you think the robots gave him an Austrian accent because they looked back in human history and went, the Nazis had something going on. They were, they were doing something right. It would be interesting to explore like. Why they gave why their they would two one thousands yeah. or why they gave their Terminators an Austrian accent. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I could, it doesn't need to be a movie, but I could definitely sit through an entire short story on them deciding what <laughs> accent to give their robots. Well, especially when you think about number two and he's just like this blue eyed blonde haired. Right. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, dude, I'm telling you the robots were, they have no sympathy. They have no empathy. They're like, well, that's what we want to do. Well, it's like it's almost as if they were looking at like, well, who are some of the worst like people in history? And they just right. came up with this. And it's like, that is what is scary. So we'll just do that. Do you think and you, you, you can cut this out. Do you think that they were looking for the most successful dictators of all time? For sure. I mean, if we look at AI now, like AI art, for instance, all they're doing is taking things from different artists and like, you know, amalgamating them and, and just smushing them all together. So I would imagine that that's like if if we're going off of what AI does now and applying that sensibility to what was going on in the Terminators and you know, 2029 in this fictitious, like it's the same thing. It's them taking a bunch of horrible people and mashing them together. Generally speaking, obviously like from history in Terminator two, the guy has a straight up English accent, like or an American accent. Right. And, and he doesn't have any like discernible. I mean, he, he just seems like a guy from California. So it is, right. it is interesting California. to, to think about like, why would they give Arnold an accent and not any of the others, because if we if we skip ahead to like T3 and T4, it continues with no accents. So right. it is I don't know. It is really interesting. And all that is to say, like, this is a clearly a thought experiment and no, no one thought about this at all. I don't think whenever they were putting this movie together. So no, well, to think about it they? is kind of silly in general. But yeah. But no, but again, though, that's that's what's so profound about this movie is that a sci fi. I mean, sci fi has always touched on a lot of like current events. Uh, right. Star Trek is a prime example. Yeah. Prime example. Star Trek is all of I mean, I mean, basically every race represented a different country on Earth. Yeah. And so but this movie is so profound because it's a sci-fi action movie that came out in a day and age where high mindedness was like the exception and not the rule. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's why it, it stands the test of time because it really does feel like it's trying 
to not only entertain you, but really make you think about the fucking world you're, you're living in and why things are happening the way they're happening and trying to look forward enough to, to really question is the shit that we're doing now the right thing? And I think we're only just now getting to a point of answering the question that this brings up in 1984. And that is so compelling to think about. And it is so interesting that it has taken this fucking long to get to a point of even, of even continue of even thinking about any of this shit. It's just, yeah. it's fucking mind blowing. It really is. Yeah. So, well, and, and again, that's what the problem is, though, is because this is why, dude, I've been saying this for years now. Has nobody watched Terminator? Yeah. I've yeah, been it saying really, it every time. Every time there's a new thing from Boston Robotics where they're like, look at this amazing thing that we did. But should you? Now let's kick it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to bully it, but it's a test. It does feel like they think that they can control it in one way or another. And do you put think, some sort of escape plan onto it or some shit, but I just don't. Do you think <sighs> that like, do you think in like 60 years, robots are going to look at Boston robotics the way that like a lot of people, including the black communities, look at the Tuskegee experiments? I, it's dude, it's very possible. We're living in a time right now that is going to be looked back at as the beginning of some shit that all of us should have known better. Like literally well, that's all of us should have known better. Laws should have been passed. Rules should have been set up. All we are living in that moment right now. And it, unfortunately our fucking politicians are all a thousand years old and right. none of them even know <laughs> that this is happening. They can't get their mind around fucking Facebook. And so we're <laughs> sitting around like wondering what the future of AI is going to do. And they're like, I think Facebook stole my recipe type did shit. You, like, did you see that thing where they were talking? I think it was the, uh, I think it was the, like the CEO or one of the head engineers at Google. And they were trying to get him to explain like how it can track them. And they were like, so if I leave my phone over there and I step over there, is it going to know where I'm at? L like, <laughs> this is what I'm talking we're, about. And this is how we all do. Yes. This is how we get to a point of AI being able to take over because right. we all have doddering old fucking fools running this fucking country that have no idea the technology that is going on right now. And all of these people like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk know that they are smarter than the people running this country. And so they're able to get away with shit that you would never be able to get away with if you had somebody savvy in office able to actually think and understand and implement rules that could stop shit like this. And we're only five fucking years away from all of it happening <laughs> it's fucking terrifying wow. i don't know if it's actually five years i mean terminator is in, in, in a crystal the timeline, ball in the timeline the, oh in the timeline <laughs> yes absolutely i think what's gonna get even more depressing is if we watch more terminator movies and we're just gonna keep sitting here going like <sighs> <laughs> that's just because there are more terminators past t2 that's why it's gonna be depressing I, I, but, but what I, what I want to talk about here is how everything is wrapped up in this film, because my favorite part is when he comes out and says, I have been staring at this photo of you forever and thinking about what creepy. you, what it is super creepy, but, but I've been trying to figure out what you were thinking in this moment. I've memorized every curve and every line in this photo. And then at the end of the fucking movie, the photo gets taken. She's talking to John Connor about John Connor's dad. And it turns out the entire time that he's been wondering, what is she thinking about in this photo? It's fucking him. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole thing is wrapped up. It's the perfect goddamn perfect ending. Movie. It's so fucking well written. And it's perfect, so dude. fucking smart. And all of it fits together like this perfect fucking puzzle mm -hmm. and yep. and it's it's just so intelligently written and this is why i have such a hard time 
watching movies nowadays because nobody writes stuff in this way anymore where you sit right. down at the end and you're like, God damn, that was such a satisfying ending. And the setup was good. The fuck, all of it just fits together in this way that feels good to watch and is satisfying beyond belief. And that is why this movie holds up so well. It's, it, dude, it is like, it is like a, f you, despite how I feel about Avatar and current James Cameron and some of the choices he's made after Terminator 2 and, and everything else, this movie is fucking genius all around. Know, I, and it is incredible how far he's fallen after this movie. I, I would pay so much money to see Edward Furlong's bloated ass come back and play John Connor in the future. 100%. But see, then we Just get into the more the more current stuff where they fucking CGI John Connor in. I don't right. know if you've seen those. But no, like not yet. No, yeah, I, I I keep meaning to get caught up on the new ones, but I just I love this idea of him coming on like on screen the way he looks now, and just everybody going around going like, "That's the guy." <laughs> You're that's gonna our great us? military leader. <laughs> that's our great military leader. He looks like he looks like Castro at the end of days. Like what is happening right now? I would love it. He's he's asthmatic and fat and can barely even walk the fucking <laughs> battleground. Like, but, uh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got five minutes in between my band set. What do you all want? <laughs> All right. Well, do you have anything else on this or do you want to no, get into final think, thoughts and ratings? I think body shaming Edward Furlong is a perfect ending to this. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you give me your final thoughts and your rating for Terminator 1984? Uh, Terminator is, you know, I hadn't watched it in a long time. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going into. You and I actually talked before we went to go watch it about how, you know, T2 is better than T1. Um, for, um, I, I, and now that we're talking about it, I don't know that it is um, from a I mean, yeah, from an action standpoint, from a special effects standpoint, it might be. I'm going to have to go back and watch it again Cinem because like, from a cinema standpoint, T2 but, might be better. But like from a just like idea script from a plot, relevance standpoint. Oh, yeah. From, a re yeah. from, a, from its level of relevance, uh, T1 might be the best one um, as far as that aspect of it goes. Um but I it just was, doesn't I, have I, it just doesn't have the cinematic chops that the sequel does. I think that's no, the biggest thing that it has true. working against it. That's true. Um, I do like that they brought back a, a semi truck scene in the second one. Yeah. Um, but uh, but overall, no, dude, uh, T1 gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Uh, it's wow. um, I, I, I it's I told you before it is one of my favorite sci fi movies of all time. The writing is perfect. The casting was perfect. The cinematography, the acting, the everything about this movie hits the nail on the fucking head. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with pretty much all of that. I um, I want to read my letterbox review here. This still holds up so damn well, even if some of the effects don't. The stop motion is top tier for its time, and the plot and script is smart, fun, and high-minded. This has withstood the test of time for a reason, and I understand why it spawned a franchise that raised multiple generations, but it's still not as good as its sequel. I loved this movie, and I gotta tell you, after having talked about it for about an hour with you, I think that I'm gonna come up on my rating a little bit. I initially gave this an eight out of 10. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nine. Dude, this is, I think the more we broke it down and the more how prolific it is, how smart it is, how fun it is, the acting, the script, dude, it's the just- The pacing. The pacing is good. You know, I remember, it had been several years since I watched this and I had remembered thinking the last time I watched it, like this is mostly kind of like chase type stuff. That's that's what I remember thinking, um, but it's not. It's it's far like more Lord than that. Lord of the that. Rings on fast forward. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's way more than that. It's when you really look at how- forward thinking and smart this movie is it is really hard to give this anything under a nine and i just yeah. think that this is i mean this is genuine genuinely one of the smartest best well-written sci-fi movies of all time and i think that the, the franchise itself 
regardless of how you feel about anything past T2, um, this is one of the strongest like beginnings of any franchise that exists out there. You know, so, I was sitting here thinking like, cause I keep saying it's one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time um, or series of all time. Um, I think the only sci-fi series like movie series I like more than Terminator is the Aliens franchise. You know, um, I the think- Alien franchise is and and that and that's not me going which one uh, you know are there other Alien is my favorite sci-fi franchise of all time. And this I think might be I I'd, I'd have to really like ponder over but I think the Terminator franchise might be my second favorite. I really like doing these classic reviews because it's like it really gives me an opportunity to sit down and watch a movie I've seen half a dozen to a dozen times and really try to pick it apart and figure out why it's good, why I like it and why it holds up so well this many years later. So we may have to do aliens after this. And and then you can get really, really sad when you realize that these are what mainstream movies used to be like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if mainstream is the right word because these were still, I don't know. We don't block, but I, when I say mainstream, I mean like blockbuster movies and yeah, um, maybe, movies maybe not, sure. maybe not so much alien, but Terminator was a blockbuster. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And now we have things like, I don't know, what's the, the latest, the last big sci-fi movie. Blue Beetle. No, that's a superhero movie. That doesn't count. Uh, we did get Interstellar. That was really good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are, but that's the Dune. thing is sci-fi. Yeah. Dune, uh, sci-fi is so, has so much potential to really stretch the boundaries of everything in the cinematic language. And I think that's why I've always liked sci-fi so much is because you can use it to make profound statements. You can, you, you can use it to make amazing sceneries. You can use it to make, to, to really bring the human imagination onto the screen And that's what I think has always been so amazing about sci-fi is that it's really got the potential to be really good middle of the road or really bad. But even so, it's a lot like horror in that way, where even the really bad ones have redeeming qualities. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's and it's a little more socially acceptable than horror is. And you can you can reach a broader audience while still maintaining the same sensibilities as a horror movie. And I think Terminator is a great fucking example of that. That. There's yep. there's special effects that had you put into a horror movie it would not stand out at all. And you'd be like, yep, that belongs there. So I it mean, dude, really at, is fucking crazy how similar at, these two genres are. Look at Especially Stargate. In the 80s. Star, Stargate's a great example. Like Stargate, if you just want like a fun action movie to watch, you can watch it. But there is a very real uh, message about human subjugation in that movie as well. And so this is what's so again, this is why I love sci-fi so much because it uses the idea of blockbuster eye catching, exciting movies. And there's almost always an underlying theme in there somewhere. Yeah. And it's, and it really, if you're paying attention, that's the good thing about the, one of the good things about sci-fi and, and horror has some of this too, especially more avant-garde art house horror. Um, it is, it, it works on two different levels. If you're there to just see kills and explosions and, and badass big blockbustery popcorn type shit, it works on that level. And then you can also start to pick it apart, like in Terminator about what it's saying about society and where we're moving and, and all of that stuff. And it just works on two different levels in every great piece of cinematic art works on both of those levels. And when you do it correctly, like Terminator, it, it will stand the test of time forever. This is a movie that will be significant, profound, and important forever. Mm-hmm. And it well, is because it has those the further two the fu- Especially the further in the future we go. Yes. And the closer we get to this all becoming a reality. Absolutely. So... If you like this, make sure you hit the like button. If you really liked it, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we've got a lot more content like this on this channel. I think that, um, 
you know, this taught me a valuable lesson today. We need to be doing more sci-fi because this is something that I don't get into nearly as much. This is something that I think that if we lean more toward, uh, we have to do more movies like this because the, the modern shit for me just feels shallow and, and like, you know what I really want to do? Fucking Blade Runner. And and the Blade yeah. Runner sequel and like there there are things Logan's that run. I, we need Logan's, to do Logan's run. run there there are things in the sci fi genre that I am not familiar enough with that I would love to sit down and try to pick apart in the same way that we just did this and so I I admit this was a good pick this was a good pick um, I will say if we're going to do a sci fi movie we do need to do uh, one that. I don't know a lot of people. I know a lot of people in the sci-fi community have watched it, but I don't personally know a lot of people that have watched it. And it's THX 1138. Uh, it was uh, George. It was George Lucas's first sci-fi film before oh. he did Star Wars. Okay. And it's fucking incredible. All right. Well, if you have any suggestions for sci-fi movies that we haven't touched on or that you want to maybe see us do and pick apart in this same way, uh, leave them down in the comments because I am more open now to doing sci-fi now that we've done this. I think this was this was eye opening. And I think if we can find more stuff like this that is significant, I'll be down. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and, uh, you know, I know that we've been doing some um, weird stuff and our, our schedules have been weird and all that stuff, but we really appreciate all the support we've been getting lately. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next time for Run the Deep. Did bye you want to do the subscribe comment? We did that already. You didn't, you didn't do subscribe or like. I, I did. Ta-ta. <laughs> Bye.